Tuesday, February 5, 2019, Apple Newsroom. Angela Aarons plans April departure after five successful years. That wasn't the headline, of course. It was the sub. The head was, Apple names Deidre O'Brien Senior Vice President of Retail Plus People. But it was the Angela Aarons news that caught fire. There'd been very little advanced word, and so it caught almost everyone by surprise. And what followed was a fascinating and somewhat grotesque glimpse into our collective psyche as the internet stumbled all over itself to rush out its hottest of hot takes about Aarons leaving. Many absurd, reflective, projective, and in general, little to do with Aarons and a lot to do with our own damage and frustrations. So, what's really going on? Welcome back. Thanks so much for being here again. I'm Renee Ritchie, and this is Vector. Angela Ahrens came to Apple five years ago, fresh from a hugely successful stint as CEO of Burberry. Why move from CEO to SVP, some wondered at the time? Isn't that a downgrade in power and prestige? Not when it's at Apple. In many other companies, those roles and responsibilities would be commensurate with a CEO or president position in their own right. Retail is especially enormous at Apple, with its own marketing, events, logistics, support, and the lion's share of employees at the company. And it was growing. I'm I mean, back in the beginning, after the usual pundits dismissed the very idea in their usual doom and gloom pundit dismissive ways, Steve Jobs found a great leader in Ron Johnson, a great consultant in former board member Mickey Drexel of The Gap and J. Crew, and built a prototype to get all the mistakes out of the way before the public set foot one into an operational store, and then began to systematically roll the stores out across the U.S. and, eventually, around the world. Well some of the world at least. It was a genius move. Before Apple was fighting and often losing to get shelf space in big boxes in computer stores that cared not one whit about selling a Mac versus something else, or often worse, were openly hostile about the Mac. After, Apple had a dedicated staff selling not just the Mac and iPod, but everything else Apple ecosystem as well. Not just the what, but the why and the how. And while the sticker price was the same, Apple had to fork over not one cent of any sales to Sears or CompUSA. When Johnson left in 2011, Apple and Tim Cook experienced a brief bout of terminal mishiring in the form of Dixon's John Browett where Steve Jobs had famously said, if you take care of the top line, the bottom line will take care of itself, Browett seemed very much like a bottom line guy. Turns out you couldn't run Apple retail like supply chain. You had to run it like design. Lessons relearned, Apple turned to Angela Aarons to take its retail efforts to the next level. Someone who knew, in the company's grand tradition, that it's ultimately all about customer experience, differentiated customer experience. Now wait, stop, don't jump on your angry comments just yet. I'll get to any rage point you want to make, I promise. Just give me a scalding hot minute first. Previously, Apple Stores and Apple Online were functionally two completely different things. To the extent that, if you ordered something online, you couldn't pick it up at your local retail location, much less return it there when and if anything went wrong. Reorganizing and reconciling those two disparate apparatuses into a single harmonious whole was only one of several massive challenges that faced Aaron's when she started. Another was handling the Jormungandr-like lineups that circled every Apple Store, sometimes several times, every time Apple launched a hot new product. Marketing loved them because of the publicity they generated, but they were a bad experience for customers who stood out in the cold, hoping the exact configuration they wanted wouldn't already be sold out by the time it became their turn to buy. Apple was also getting ready to launch the watch, which in addition to blending fashion and technology in a way far unlike anything the company had done before, would require try-ons and other retail situations beyond what the stores had ever offered or even considered. Johnny Ive, Apple's chief creative officer, wanted to redesign Apple stores and, along with Apple Park, considered it important enough to step away from his day-to-day -day management and consumer products duties for a non-trivial amount of time just to focus on the project. The first part in deep collaboration with Aaron's. Then there was the environment and recycling programs with Lisa Jackson, and education, a passion shared with Tim Cook, and the desire to transform Apple's efforts from a few courses into the rich curriculum that became today at Apple. I won't dive into all of them, their successes, their failures, their lessons learned, 
and there are many, many challenges still to be overcome. But consider that now, today, you can pre-order almost all hot new products and reserve them for pickup at your local store. Little to no lining up is needed. Trade in your old device for a discount, take a class on how to use it, and if something is wrong, you can take it back there and exchange it or get a refund. In addition to new and newly redesigned stores in many more locations, new retail and support app experiences, expanded outreaches to local developer and creative talents, and the list goes on and on. It's impossible to look at what's been accomplished to date as anything less than significant. You may still have frustrations. Sure, hell, I do. The retail experience, absent clear checkout locations, can still be bewildering to first-time customers. High volume stores can still be clusters where you can't even imagine walking in or getting an appointment in a timely fashion. Parts can still be not available in store or for new products at all. Diagnostic and repair skill and talent can feel outsourced to depots and overly broad and expensive. Not all stores have been updated or have all the new today at Apple courses, and not all regions even have stores yet, like Ireland and India. And this list, too, goes on and on. Some of those problems predate errands. Some of those are side effects of the way Apple stores have always been designed. And some of them were exacerbated under her watch as Apple has continued to scale at a rate that can only be properly described by a made-up word like redonkulous. And all of them, and more, now sit clearly battle royale style in the path of Aaron's successor, Deidre O'Brien, as she ramps up as a new SVP of retail and people. As a 30-year veteran of Apple, O'Brien actually helped launch both the online and retail stores back in the day, and worked in operations as a vice president under Tim Cook before becoming head of human resources. As such, she's perhaps uniquely qualified to continue Apple's momentum in customer experience while also shoring up many of the day-to-day -day frustrations that chip away and dent at that experience. There have been some concerns that this puts too much on O'Brien's plate in that perhaps running Apple's single biggest employee pool and being head of people puts her in a position of potential and inevitable conflict. All of Apple's SVPs are overloaded though, so that's nothing new, but it is something Apple may want to address as it continues to scale. And we might see some of that, including some of the individual portfolios, continue to shift in the future like they have in the past as time passes and talent accrues. As for Aaron's, while I could certainly see her pop up again, even soon, ready and eager to take on another challenge at the crossroads of retail and customer experience, I also wouldn't be surprised if we don't see her pop up again, at least not for a good long while. Some people have claimed that it's odd Vogue business would run a profile on errands just a week or so ago on January 28, right before she left. That it must be a Scott Forstall, the former SVP of iOS situation, all over again. That something must have gone wrong, that she must have been fired. But Forstall was something completely different. He was singularly able to interpret and implement the taste and will of Steve Jobs at an Apple that was suddenly bereft of Steve Jobs. That was never going to abide. Errands, on the other hand, collaborated beautifully with Ive, Cook, and others. But nature abhors a vacuum and a bad hot take can go viral on Twitter before the truth even gets its send button on or whatever. So an incredible amount of callous, thoughtless bunk has been written about Apple and Aaron's over the last couple of days as well. So, no, she didn't get fired because of China or because of iPhone XR promos or sales or because of anything else. No, she didn't quit because she was being passed over for the CEO gig or because of any toxicity in Apple's culture or for any of the other stupefyingly dense fanfic reasons the rest of us have had to read since Tuesday. All of which, let's just point out again, reflect and project nothing more than our own specific frustrations and damage. It's the hot taker, not the hot takee. So, why did Aaron's leave Apple? Michael Stieber, writing for 9to5Mac. According to sources familiar with the matter, Aaron's indicated in a team message that she may plan to step back from day-to-day -day management and lead a quieter life rather than take the reins of another company following her departure. Apple CEO Tim Cook, in his tweet, said it was bittersweet. Angela, we thank you for all you've done to inspire and energize our teams. From Instagram, by the author of the same Vogue profile. I love fashion for 40 years. It is wonderful when you know everything there is to know about the industry because you grew up in it. I've been gone from London almost five years. I have two kids there. They were at university when we moved and they decided to stay. My son is a budding musician with an honors degree in songwriting and my daughter has an honors degree in marketing. She works for a startup magazine and he does gigs around London and writes great music. I miss them, obviously, from Vogue France. I plan to take the summer off, said Aaron, who declined to disclose what type of job she'd be interested in next. She said she plans to enjoy some traveling before making any new commitments. On her agenda are a Rwanda mission and visiting two of her children in London. Aaron said that throughout her marriage, her husband has constantly been moving with her to London and then San Francisco, and now it's time for him to get a turn. 
frequently in our industry, spending time with your family, or more aptly and comedically, spending time with your money, are just excuses to save face and cover up bad breakups. And sometimes, just sometimes, something happens that makes you realize you have enough money, but you'll never have enough time with your family. And you start considering how to change that equation as best you can, as fast as you can. I can somewhat relate to how that feels. I'm making a lot of changes too. I'll get into them in future videos, but in general, I'm spending a little less time on what everyone else wants from me and a little more time on what I need for myself. And if you want, you can start doing exactly the same thing right now, today, with Brilliant. Doesn't matter if it's math, physics, coding, machine learning, neural networks, you can start to learn about any of it in just five minutes a day. Each Brilliant problem provides you with the context and framework that you need to tackle it so that you can learn concepts by applying them. If you like the problem, and want to learn more, there's a course quiz that explores the same concept in greater detail. I seriously wish they had this kind of active training when I was in school, because maybe then I'd still be in school. It's just so much more efficient. So what are you waiting for? Go to brilliant.org slash vector and finish your day a little smarter every day. Thanks Brilliant and thanks to all of you for your support. I've had the pleasure of chatting briefly with Angela Ahrens a couple times during the informal aftermaths of Apple events. The first time was at the Union Square Apple Store opening, which kicked off the new design and Today at Apple programs. She started off telling everyone there that she didn't really like public speaking, but was willing to address us there that day because of how deeply she believed in the Today at Apple and associated projects. She cared enough about it to get up on the Apple keynote stage, one of the biggest stages in technology, several times over the years to help give it the spotlight she felt it deserved. I mean, seriously, Johnny I famously doesn't like the stage either, and when's the last time you saw him up on it. But she did that. She did that for Apple and for retail. Now she's done, at least for now. Who knows, Bob Mansfield came back from his castle to run Titan. Maybe Angela Ahrens can be wooed back to launch the showrooms, or maybe she'll just get one for the next road trip, or maybe that's just my nod at all the fanfic. Either way, I'd love to hear yours. Hit like, hit subscribe, it really helps out the channel, and then hit up the comments below and let me know. And thank you so much for watching.